What's going on guys? Welcome back to Pocket Pixel Tech. It's Hero here. And today we're not talking about an incremental upgrade. We're not even talking about a small refresh. We're talking about leaks that, if true, completely resets the handheld gaming landscape for 2026. And we have credible Intel on Intel's next major move, Panther Lake. And the mysterious Arc V3080. For the last two years, AMD has been the king. Steam Deck, Rogue, Ally, Ally Xbox X, Legion Go 1 and 2, they all run on Team Red. Intel tried to fight back with their MSI Claw A1M and the A8. And let's be honest, they were rocky starts, but they have improved, but not enough to dent the market share for AMD. But this new leak suggests Intel isn't just trying to catch up, they're trying to leapfrog the entire industry. So anyway, let's dive into the data. First, let's clear up the confusion because the naming here is a total mess. You're going to hear the name Arc V3080 thrown around a lot. Historically, the 3080 name was for an entry level desktop card, so everyone assumed wait, are we trying to put a desktop card into a, a handheld device? The answer is no. What we're looking at here is a super integrated GPU, it's physically fused into Panther Lake compute tile. It is an iGPU, just like the Radeon 7088M, but this is Intel branding it as a B3080 to send a specific message. I think we're trying to say, stop thinking of as a integrated graphics. This performs at a discrete card level. So what does that mean to you? Current handhelds, I know you're probably playing at 1080p or 1200p, but really you're using scaling technology to put it down to 720p or 900p using XCSS or FSR. In the future, you are looking at to running at native 1200p. Same again, when we're playing these games, normally we're aiming for low or medium type graphics. The aim is to aim for high or ultra settings. And even more importantly, try to keep the battery optimized so you're running between 15 to 30 watts. So that is proper handheld portability. So let's talk about Lunar Lake and Panther Lake and what's the difference. So the original Lunar Lake was built using TSM's N3B node. We talked about this before, but it has eight XC2 cores, and that's really what powers the GPU. It's a great chip, efficient, and solid drivers. Well, especially now, after one year. But it's still an evolution of what we have today. Now, let's look at Panther Lake. This is Gen 3. First, massive change, the node. Intel is moving to their own 18A process. This is Intel's bet the company technology in plain English, they're trying to go alone. It allows them to pump way more power through their chip without melting your hands. Second, core count. We're jumping from the 8 to 12 XC3 cores. So what does this all translate to? So 12 cores is 12 cores equals 50% more raw horsepower. The 18A node equals Efficiency King, so we're talking about high clock, slow heat, and the 9600 9, RAM equals zero stutter or improved bandwidth. All this tech talk is fine, but what does it actually score? This is where things get wild. Well. We have leaked OpenCL benchmarks that paint a very clear picture. The original claw scored around 26,000, it struggled and we know that. Above that, the Claw 8 AI scored around 30,000, but we know it's more efficient and the drivers are well supported. Then we have the next big competitor, AMD's Ryzen Z2e, which is being used on the A8, the Legion Go 2, and the Xbox Ally X. So benchmarks wise, it is scoring a bit higher, but that's based on a 30 
by what profile. The interesting thing is that for reference, I've put in a 3050 laptop graphics card uh, for reference and the Arc B3080 Panther Lake is scoring between 48,000 to 53,000. That's really optimistic. So that is literally putting a 3050 graphics card into your handheld. The gap, that's a insane 63% generational leap. In the world of silicon, 63% is really unheard of, especially in this small form factor. But let's be honest, this isn't going to be cheap. So let's talk about the current devices that are currently available in the market. So we have the ATI around $1,099, the Legion Go 2 at $1,349, and the upcoming One X Apex around $1,700 using the AI Max 395 chipset. Now, based on the fact what we know around MSI. They've talked about a eight inch device with OLED and with Panther Lake. I'm expecting them to price it slightly below the Legion Go 2 or around that space. So it won't be as cheap as the existing device. So expect it to be expensive, but I'm assuming that with the OLED technology, with the improved uh, performance, this is what they're going to be pitching it at. So the million dollar question, should you buy a handheld now or wait? So we're in a weird spot. CSS 2026 is in January. That's literally just around the corner. So you really have two options. Option A, you buy the Claw A8 now. Honestly, it's a solid starter choice. It is nearly one year old, so happy birthday, and the drivers have been drastically improved. If you are going to pick up a Claw 8 AI, I would advise you to look for open box store use offers because it is really good performance value. However, if you already have this generation device or even an 8 AI, or a Legion Go 1, then maybe off, you, you may be better off waiting for a couple of more weeks to see the actual results of the CSS, the unveiling, and I expect in the, the first half of 2026, you'll see the devi new devices being sold. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you liked the insights. Let me know if you think I've got anything wrong. Please do hit like and subscribe. And let me know if you're going to buy a Claw 8AI or you're going to wait for Panther Lake.